Let's open to uh, Third John. Third John. And I'll let you figure out the chapter on that one. Father, bless these words that we share. Thank you for each one that's here, Lord. And speaking for Pastor Mark and I, we appreciate them. Lord, each member of this church. Lord, we just thank you for it. And bless the words that we hear now. Minister to our hearts. Uh, what you would want in uh, Christ's name, we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, 1 John, verse 2. Uh, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Then flip over to Matthew chapter 10. From there. There, Matthew 10, verse 1. Uh, when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Uh, we know that uh, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 6, it says that uh, the whole head is sick, the whole heart is faint. Uh, from the sole of the foot to the top of the head, there's no soundness in us, and we're full of putrefying sores, and uh, our wounds have not been cured. Neither can they be, basically. Uh, our condition before salvation, we were sick people, sick with sin, sick, lost. Um, and then we got saved, and... Uh, and it was great, it was great to be saved. And uh, God gave us a new mind and uh, a fresh perspective on things. His spirit came into us, but uh, is it possible? I have four questions today we're gonna to look at. Uh, the first one is this. Uh, is it possible to get spiritually sick? Uh, we all get physically sick, like it's cold and flu season, you know. Uh, we all get sicknesses, and it's, it's interesting to me the similarities between physical sickness and spiritual sickness. A lot of similarities in those two things, we're going to look at them this morning. Uh, if you want to see an adult act like a child, have them get sick, right? And many adult, big tough guys, when they get sick, they become like little babies again. And they want their mama, and they want their blankie, and they want to hide, and all of this. And uh, we're like that. We get sick, we don't feel well, uh, and we do that. Or we do the exact opposite. We get sick, and we don't think that we are sick. And we tell everybody, I'm fine. So you don't look well, and I'm fine. You should go to a doctor. I'm not going to the doctor. I'm fine. That's the word. I'm fine. And you know that you're not, but you want to believe you are. And uh, But you're sick. Physical sickness. It happens to everybody. That's why they tell you to get a flu shot, take vitamins, all that. Well, <clears throat> it's possible for a believer to get spiritually sick. And uh, it happens to... It can happen to anybody, any believer at any time. They get spiritually sick. So, is it, the first question, is it possible to get spiritually sick? I would that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. But what if your soul isn't prospering? Have you ever had a time where you felt spiritually sick? I'm not feeling well spiritually. I don't feel great. What does being sick mean? I don't feel good. How many times I've come home and said to my wife, I don't feel good. So let's go again. <laughs> it's like, you don't feel good. Something's not right. And you know it physically. You can tell your own body. I know when I feel good 
and I know when I'm not feeling good, whether it's just a little thing or it might be a serious thing, but I know it inside. And we <clears throat> should know it in our souls. We should be able to tell when we're getting spiritually sick. And the problem, well, there's many problems associated with that, but the second question that goes with that, uh, if you can say, yes, uh, this is one of the hardest parts of, of uh, being spiritually sick is knowing that you're spiritually sick and saying, you know what? I don't feel good spiritually. I, 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 something's wrong. And uh, it's hard to say that sometimes. But if you can say that, if you can acknowledge that it's possible that I might not be 100% spiritually right now in my walk, Per positionally, I'm perfect. We're not talking about that this morning. We're talking about our experience. You know, <clears throat> uh, the second question is, how did I get sick spiritually? Like, how do you get sick physically? Germs, major cause. Germs. They got these stupid. I don't know. Stupid. They got these things everywhere. Squeeze it and wipe your hands. Clean your hands before you do this. Clean your hands before you do that. Why? Because of germs, germs spread, sickness, germs spread, uh, all kinds of things. And someone else could be sick because you touched the same doorknob they touched 20 days ago. You got their same sickness. Germs spread like that. Germs can spread spiritually, uh, too. How did I get sick spiritually? There are many many ways to get sick spiritually and knowing them is uh, half the battle to overcoming them and getting better you know uh, I'm given an armor of God in Ephesians 6 you know a whole armor helmet breastplate truth we talked about last week feet everything uh, shield of faith to what quench the fiery dots of the wicked one what happens if I don't hold up my shield of faith and the devil throws a fiery dot my way? It hits me. And when it hits me, what happens? I get infected with the fiery dart. It's a poisonous dart that he throws. It's designed to hit me and do damage. To what? Make me sick spiritually. And so if I'm not, like, if I forget to put on my shield of faith in the morning, I'm subject to those fiery darts, and if one hits me and penetrates, I can get sick. Or I can get sick if I don't put on my helmet of salvation and I allow the projections and the accusations of the wicked one to come in and feed my mind with all kinds of thoughts that are not good. I can get sick by not putting on the armor. How many of us really honestly remember to put the whole armor on every day? Raise your hand. No? Okay. No? I Every day you got to put on the whole armor of God. Well, what if I forget one piece? Then the devil looks for that little weakness in the armor, and that's what he's going to attack. And we're just humans. We forget to put it on. Like when you go outside, and it's raining and snow, and it's cold, and you can go outside, and you can put your coat on. Where's your coat? I forgot. Forgot to put it on. No, don't complain when you get a cold, parents will say, right? Because you're going to get sick if you don't. Take precautions. Same thing with spiritual sickness. I forgot to put it on. I was so busy today. I ran out of the house and I didn't pray and I didn't didn't uh, uh, put on uh, the armor of God. And so the dot came and it infected me. And you might have felt the dot come. Maybe it was uh, uh, somebody gave you a cross look or word and it pierced you or they said something that offended you. Many sicknesses start with that, you know, a word that offends. And it's like a dart that pierces. And it goes into your soul, and it's like a cockatrice egg that it talks about in Isaiah 55. A cockatrice egg, it goes into the down, into the innermost parts, and it starts festering. And you seem like you're okay, but there's something, there's an infection inside of you. And it's working its, its uh, way into spreading and it's going to come out or make you sick sooner or later all right spiritual sickness it happens uh, what are other ways I could get sick uh, what about a, a root of bitterness the Bible says 
uh, to not let a root of bitterness spring up in you. Do not fail the grace of God lest a root of bitterness spring up in you. What does that mean this morning? If I fail the grace of God, does the grace of God fail me? Never. Grace is God's grace, unmerited favor. It is there for me. I have access to it. I stand in it. But what can I fail the grace of God? Yes. Why? How? I stop believing in it. I stop listening to it. I stop heeding it. Its teachings, its advice. I stop uh, considering it for my life and I allow condemnation to come in instead of grace when I fail. And when I do that, guess what? I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick. I'm making myself sick by doing that. Roots of bitterness can stay in a person's soul for years and fester, just like the cockatrice egg, for years. They can, they can cause problems in you, and then eventually you get so sick of it that you need, uh, really need serious help. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. What happens when that happens? So, uh, roots of bitterness, offenses, words that people say that cause wounds, not putting on the armor. These things make us sick spiritually. They do a work on our soul, and our soul no longer prospers, but it labors instead. It labors to get by. You know when you're sick and you're trying to do something, you say, I just, I don't have the energy for it. I don't feel good. And everything becomes a struggle. And so when you begin to get sick spiritually, everything that's spiritual becomes a struggle to you, right? It, it's hard to go to church. It's hard to pray. It's hard to read the Word of God. It's hard to talk to people about God. It's hard to do anything spiritually. Why? Because I'm sick. I don't feel good. And you know how we are when we're physically sick. We want to put the blankets over our head and just hide and cover you. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to do anything. Why? I'm sick. Leave me alone. Same thing happens to us when we get spiritually sick. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to pray. I don't want to even talk to God. Why? I'm spiritually sick. Can you admit that? Can I admit that? Many times we don't. We say the same thing we say about physical sickness. We go, I'm fine. Have you ever said that? Oh, haven't seen you lately. Everything okay? I'm fine. Why? And we're offended already because somebody cares about us and is checking on our spiritual health. Yeah, that's the easiest way to get offended as a believer, to have somebody check on your spiritual health. And they don't say, I'm checking on your spiritual health, but they're asking, hey, hey everything okay? I haven't seen you in a bit. Hey, you look like you're sad. Is it you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, maybe, maybe we could pray. I don't want to pray right now. No, don't ask me to pray. I'm fine. And in that, those words is an indication it's a symptom of uh, spiritual sickness. And that, that is the third point or the third question today. How did I get sick? Number two, what are the signs of spiritual sickness? What are the signs? Because there are signs, just like there isn't physical sickness. Sometimes you can look at a person and say, they're not feeling good. How do you know? I can tell. Uh, go back to what we always say about the devil, the three C's the countenance, the conduct, and the conversation. You can tell when a person's not feeling good. Why? They don't look like themselves when they're feeling better. There's no smile. There's no expression of peace on the thing. They don't look good because they don't feel good. And we can tell that and maybe we'll, we won't say something or maybe we will, but we know and say, hey, did you see so-and-so today? Yeah, they don't look well. And maybe it's a serious illness, and you say, they, they don't look well, we have to pray for them. Or maybe it's like, they don't look themselves, maybe they're sick, and we can pray for them. So, uh, that's a symptom. Symptoms of spiritual sickness. Uh, we uh, get angry very easily, moody, just like physical sickness. We hide under the covers, don't see them much anymore. Things begin to happen spiritually in our lives, the things that we were doing before, and we were excited about God, and we're excited about church, we're excited about this. Not so much anymore. Why? I'm spiritually sick. I have a sickness. Okay? And that leads us to the fourth part, is what do we do about that sickness? 
if we can acknowledge that we might be sick and we can see the symptoms. Uh, there are some people when they get sick and they know it, they know what to do. They know, uh, what do we tell everybody? Get plenty of rest, drink plenty of fluids, go see the doctor. You're not feeling better in a few days, right? Well, what do we tell people when they're spiritually sick? Uh, get plenty of rest. The finished work is our rest for us. Live in the finished work. Begin to drink plenty of fluids. The washing of the water of the Word of God heals us. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sends his word to heal. Why would he send his word to heal? Because we're sick. That's why. We might be sick before we got saved, but after we're saved, because we still have the wretched man in Romans 7, we still have a sin nature, we can get spiritually sick. I'm not a perfect person, and I haven't met one yet. So anybody can forget to put their armor on. Anybody can listen to a negative report. Anyone can entertain and have a cockatrice egg festering in their soul. But it's the person who won't admit it that has the most problem with it. But the person who can say, it's possible that I'm sick. What does that require on our parts? What requires on your part uh, to get better when you're physically sick? A little humility. A little humility goes a long way. I don't feel good and I need something. I need help. And uh, that's the beginning of getting better. I recognize that I'm ill and I need to take steps to get better. So I need to rest in the finished work. I need to drink plenty of fluids. I need to eat right. Eat of the Word of God. Let it do a work in your soul. Chew on it. Understand it. Study it. Get into it. Uh, even if it's a little, maybe you say, I, don't, I can't eat a lot right now because I'm not feeling good. Eat a little. Take a little verse. Let it do a work in your life. But don't shun it. Go after the thing that's going to make you better. Uh, hearing the Word of God makes us feel better. Singing is incredible. When you sing psalms and spiritual songs to yourselves and your hearts, it's amazing what it does for the health of your soul. It lifts you up. And when it's not, not worldly songs, but songs about God, songs about what he's done for us, songs about his love and his grace. Watch what it does for your soul when you begin to sing songs. You don't know any songs? Go on the radio, go on the whatever it is, iTunes, and you can find thousands of songs about God and his love for you. And find one you like and sing it to yourself. Over and over again, learn the words and sing it to yourself. It's a remedy for your <clears throat> spiritual sickness. The word of God, get into it. I don't understand it. <clears throat> Find one verse that you do understand. God loves you. God is love. Uh, there's three words. God is love. 1 John 4, 18. I'm just going to repeat that over and over. And then maybe something else. You know? Uh, he will keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind fixed on Him. So I think I'll try keeping my mind fixed on God. You ever be so sick that you, that you want to uh, will yourself out of the sickness? So you start thinking about pleasant things. Start thinking about like uh, the food you want to eat that you can't because you're sick, or the places you, what you would be doing, the good things in your life, and you try to mentally improve yourself because you're not feeling good. Spiritually, we can do the same thing with spiritual things because uh, we have a tendency from time to time to get sick. Like a whole church can get sick at once, you know? And if that happens, what do you have? Me. <laughs> and you can pass them up. You say, we preach messages when there's a trend, go, a trend going through the church. And you say, you say it's a, it's a church-wide sickness, and you'll hear about it from the pulpit. Yes, but what if it's an individual sickness? And we just can pray for you, but can you say, uh, I am sick, you know? The thing that keeps people from admitting that they're sick is pride. Pride. Amen. Uh, and this fear of letting somebody know that you might be spiritually sick. It's like this uh, th unwritten thing that we say, I can't tell anybody that I might be spiritually sick. I'll look like weak to them and stuff. What do you think the Bible means when it says, ah, to confess your faults to one another and pray for one another? It's not to go into a box and confess all the sins you've done. 
to a person, it's to say, I'm hurting. I don't feel good spiritually. Will you pray for me? All right? There is no shame in being sick spiritually. There's shame in when you won't admit it because of pride and you come out with things like, I'm fine. I don't want to go to the doctor. I don't want to get any medicine. I'll get over it. I'm fine. And you don't get over it. And you know, some people can be sick for months on end. You go, are you still sick? And they get even more upset. It's like, I, I'm, I'm not sick, I'm fine. But you know, you've been coughing for like four months. You know, well, it's because of the kids in school. It's because of the co-workers they gave it to me. I said, yeah, but what, is, what are you doing about it? Did you take any medicine? I don't need any medicine. Did you go to the doctor? I'm not going to the doctor. I don't like doctors. So, okay, so stay sick then. That's where, we, that's where the frustration comes. You go, all right, so just stay sick. You want to be sick forever? And at some point, you either come to grips with it and say, I got to get better. So you start trying to heal yourself, you get medicine, you take it, but you're not resting, you're still trying to do your job, you're still trying to do this because you're, 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 after all, you're the macho man and you're going to do everything that you're supposed to do. And eventually, it'll go away. Uh, maybe, but maybe it won't. But what about spiritual sickness? Does it eventually go away? Can you say, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm waiting to get through this time, uh, you know. Say, you've been like this for months, and you don't need to be. Like, if I can sense that, hey, I haven't been praying like I used to. I haven't had the joy that I once had. I'm not experiencing the peace that I had two months ago. Could I be sick spiritually? Yes, that's the answer. Okay, what, what caused it? I don't know. It could have been the armor. It could have been a word. I could be offended. I could search myself and, and take a spiritual shower and find out the reasons. I could ask God to show me. And then, um, what can I do about it? What can I do about it? Get in the Word. Take a spiritual shower. Get better. I want to get better. It just requires a little humility on our part. Get rid of the pride that says, I'm fine. Because you're not fine. And I'm not fine when I'm like that. But we could be fine. God says, I would, I would that you would prosper physically as your soul prospers spiritually. But is our soul prospering spiritually this morning? Uh, it could be. It should be. Very easily. I can take care of myself spiritually. I have... Uh, methods and I have avenues to take if I get in that condition. It's not a shameful thing, it's just a reality thing. And there's no shame in saying, I let my guard down and I allowed a, a fiery dot to come in. I listened to something that I shouldn't have. I've entertained things that I shouldn't have. I repent. First John, we'll close with this. First John 1 John 1.9, right? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A fiery dart is unrighteous. An offense is unrighteous. Uh, uh, an evil report is unrighteous. Uh, uh, a cockatrice egg is unrighteous. It doesn't belong in the righteous soul that is righteous because of what Christ has done. It's unrighteous. I confess it. It's a, 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 is it a sin to be ill? It is if I allow it to continue. If I can know that I'm sick and I acknowledge it and I won't get better, then that becomes a sin to me. But if I'm just because I'm a weak person and I forgot to do something, put up my arm or done that, and an illness came upon me through a, a vehicle that, that maybe because I let my God down or I listened to something, I just say, God, sorry, I, I'm sick here. I need to be better. He is faithful. He is faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And what is he saying? I'm going to make you better. I'm going to make you better. I sent my word to heal you. I'm going to do it. I began to work in you. I'm going to perform it. I want you to be prosperous. I want your soul to prosper. And so we have no excuse this uh, cold and flu season, we'll call it, for the spirits, like you go to the doctor and you get a physical checkup, this is like a spiritual checkup. Are you sick today? Are you not feeling good spiritually? I just gave you what to do about it, right? We have no excuses now, including myself. Talk to myself in that same way. I know when something isn't right with me spiritually. I say, well, I'm going through a dry season. Well, maybe I'm sick. 
And that's why I'm going through a dry season. Maybe I just need to see if I'm spiritually fine with God and myself. If something's causing this feeling, causing this uh, lack of excitement, lack of zeal, lack of joy, whatever it is. God wants us to prosper uh, in who we are in Christ. He does not... Um, it's not his will for us to sit here all mopey and trying to get by and struggling with our walk and, and everything becomes a struggle and you look at it and go, what's going on? You go, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Life. It's not life. It's just sick. Spiritually. Admit it. Do something about it. Get better. It's easy. Just go to God with it. I'm sick. I don't feel good. Heal me, O oh Lord. You are the great physician. You are the great physician. The great physician makes people better. He gave us power over, what does it say in Matthew 10? All manner of sickness. Not just physical sickness, all manner, all kinds of sickness and illness. There is physical illness, there is mental illness, and there is spiritual illness. And God gives us power over all of it through his life in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Right. Right. Bow your heads and close your eyes. I don't, I don't take it for granted that um, anyone that's in a particular <coughs> room that everyone is saved. Uh, you never know. Do you know that people can go to church for years and not be saved? It's an amazing thing. People can attend weekly services, hear the word of God, come to church because their mothers come or their fathers come, uh, or because their kids come, whatever it is, and they hear a message, but they've never uh, received uh, Christ as their personal Savior. Uh, if you're watching this morning a video, if you're here and you've never had a chance to receive Christ, you've heard the message, you've heard the word, you never made a personal decision, a real personal decision in your soul to have a relationship with God. Don't just have a head knowledge about Him that you forget as soon as the church is over. Have a relationship with Him that is real, personal, and lasts, and it changes your life. If you're here this morning, you've never had a chance to do that, and you would like to be serious with God for a minute and just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I would like to receive you as my Lord and Savior personally. I ask you to come into my heart. And if you're saying that prayer, and that's all it takes is one prayer to say that, put up your hand right now, we want to pray for you. Anybody here, anybody watching, if you're saying it, send us a line to Crossroad Christian Church, 15 Lynn Street in Peabody. We'll send you out a Bible and some information on that great decision that you can make for Christ today. Receive them. It's the greatest decision you'll make for yourself in your life. Father, uh, we could say this morning maybe that uh, we haven't been feeling good spiritually. If there's any here like that, Lord, and we've been battling with maybe a little spiritual sickness, Lord, uh, thank you for your provision of the word, of confession, of your will to heal us and make us healthy and prosperous, Lord. Help us to discern the symptoms of illness spiritually, Lord, and to go to you with, uh, without any trial, with humility, and ask you to cleanse us, make us whole again, Father, and uh, guard our hearts against this, Lord. And, and, and please, Lord, help us to keep putting our armor on, Lord, that we can battle any attempts from the devil to make us sick, Lord. That's half the battle right there. And we love you, Lord, and we praise you. Bless the rest of this time today. In Christ's name, amen. amen.